for the arms here we have to create the pole vectors just like we did for the legs so you want to do both of them at the same time even if you do not have the arms completely done the right arm and the left arm and the reason being is that we'll be able to pull them back together and they will have the same uh, spatial relationship from the the torso and the skeleton itself and they'll be out and in place exactly how we would like them to be professionally done nice and clean just like anything else and that will help open up the animation to be a lot more precise by allowing our artist the animation artist to be able to select our little controllers here be it the pole vectors or whatever really quickly and really nicely so what we can do here is go up to create and we're gonna come down to the locator and the locator should jump to the origin of our scene. The first thing that you can do if you like is, let me open this up a little bit by clicking on the channel box, is to scale it. So I'll hit the R button or click on the scale tool. Scale it up just so I could see it a little better. All right. Again, we're going to use that little trick to where we can snap it to the elbow. And the easiest way to do it is to hide the geometry. I'll hit W or click on my move tool and I'll come over here to where the elbow is. I'm going to hold down V, V as in Valerie, and then I'm going to come over here to the middle joint, which is the elbow. I'm just going to hover by it, hold down my middle mouse button while still holding V, the V key, which is snap to point, you'll see down, or up here I should say it's pushed in or it looks as though it's pushed in when I click on the button when I release it it's off again but again if I hold down V this is enabled snap to point and it's going to consider the joint a point so I'll just hover over it hold down my middle mouse button move it around a little bit and you see that that locator jumps there okay I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this so I'll hit control D if you ever forget that you can go up to edit at the very top and come down to duplicate. You'll see there's the hotkey, control D. And I can use the same trick. If I do not want to deselect something in here, I don't have to worry about clicking on it because again, this is in the same spot as the original object. So the duplicate is sharing the same spot. What I can do is come up here, click on the gray area. That allows me to evoke or activate my work area, this big window here. And I can do the same thing to this other side. So I'll hold down V and I'll come over here hold my middle mouse button down and move around the mouse until my object snaps there okay I can select both of them I'll drag a marquee around both of them or you could just simply shift select them and I'll pull them back as far as I think that I might need them to be and that's not too bad right there that's actually pretty good you can go back a little further if you like but um, again I just visually did that. Next thing I'm going to do is go up to modify at the very top and I'm going to freeze the transformations. Remember when we zero this stuff out that's one of the friendly things to do. So modify down to freeze transformations and sometimes if you're a little iffy about you know any memory being on these things you can also delete the history so you can go up to edit down to delete by type and over to history and that's pretty good and then we can scale these up again so I'll just hit R on my keyboard to evoke the scale tool and scale it up like that or however large you would like them and then you would name them so this one right here we'll call it left arm PV for pole vector this other one here we can call this one right arm PV again you can come up with your own naming conventions if you want to put R for right or RT. I've seen a lot of different things done. So it's really going to be up to you in the long run or the company that you're working for, the studio that you're working for. So really, as long as you stay consistent, that's going to be the best thing. Because when you get into coding, again, that is going to take you into a whole different direction to where you're going to want to you know, work with these objects differently depending on their names. So you're going to have to call them in code, and you're going to have to code them to do different things, depending on what you're going for. Okay, 
I don't know if this moved a little bit. Let me select this other one. This one's zeroed out, but uh, this one seems to have moved. So I'll put zero in there. And it should be in the same spot now. I must have accidentally moved it somehow. But that's okay. These things are pretty good. And again, what we could do if this did mess up, we could snap it to our grid. If I were to pop out of here and pop into a side view or something like that. And I would be able to snap it to one of these grids here. So first came to worse, we could snap it to the grid. I'm not too worried about that. It looks like they're lined up pretty well. And they're zeroed out. Okay. So the next part of this is just to add the pull vector. And that's simple because this is a constraint. Again, just like the leg, we'll select the pull vector itself, shift select the IK handle, and you're going to see that I don't have one on the right hand side. So that one I'll have to wait till I either do the right hand or, or I mean the right arm, or, you know, actually I have to wait till I do it. So this one here, again, you select the parent, shift select the child, or if you want to think of it as the driver, you select the driver first and then shift select the driven. Okay, go up to constrain and go down to pull vector and there you go. And always want to test this, always, always want to test this. So if you select this, kind of move it around, select this other part, the pull vector, it should move that arm and that is very nice. So I will undo and I like to use control Z. If Z is working for you as an undo, by all means go ahead and do that. But I'm going to hit control Z because on some computers it doesn't like that just the Z key. Okay, and just to get this back into place. Again, since we did a nice friendly zeroing of transformations, if I did this and then I didn't have my history, my history undo on, or I was working on somebody's computer that didn't have it on, I can simply know that I did zero this stuff out. So if I select the pull vector, come over here and zero out my translations and rotations. Rotations aren't something we'd use for a pull vector. That's something we'd hide, but just in case I did something, I could zero this all out. It should go back to place. And the same thing with this guy. This should be only translations, but I'll do the same selection just in case. Zero those out and it'll get back into place. And that's only because I did remember to zero out my controllers at the very beginning. Okay? So in the next one, we're going to be setting up part of the clavicle. And that one is a tricky one. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that one. Okay? Try this out. Make sure you get the right arm the same way. And if you have any questions, let me know.